Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are going to be doing a get ready with me which is kind of why I look a little bit uh, crazy right now. Uh, we are going to fix myself up and while I am getting ready I wanted to do a video talking all about my dog grooming school experience, uh, where I went, how it went, um, how long was I in school, some challenges that I came to with school, things like that. So if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about dog grooming and dog grooming school and all of that good stuff and just want to get some more information, then this is the video for you. It's not going to be anything super structured. I'm literally just going to be putting my makeup on while talking about my experience. I know a few of you have become interested in dog grooming and a lot of you wanted to know my experience. So instead of typing out like a big novel to, you know, a hundred different people, I figured I would just make a full video on it. Uh, I do have the weekend off from work. So I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, the last thing I want to talk about right now is dog grooming. But I figure if there are people out there who want to get into dog grooming, you need to know what to expect, what you're getting into. So first off, I hope you guys are doing well. Second of all, I hung up these little like curtain lights behind me. When I got them, I plugged them in, you know, to see if they worked. And as soon as I plugged them in, I realized that they were not turning on. They were not working. Uh, and I was like, what the fuck? So I told my boyfriend and he was like, well, you know, I can splice the the wire and see if I can get him to work that way. And I was like, okay, cool, let's try that. So he got it to work, except <laughs> only every other one is on. Like, I don't know if you can see that, like that one's on, that one's off, that one's on. It's very strange. Uh, I don't know what the fuck. They were just really cheap ones from Walmart and I thought it would be like cool to kind of split up my, my or kind of make my background a little more interesting for a change and I honestly don't know if I like it or not. So you guys will have to let me know uh, what you think of it, if you think it looks weird. Oh my god, I just realized I forgot my coffee downstairs. What a sin. So yeah, you guys will have to let me know what you think of this. If it looks really stupid or kind of cheesy, just let me know in the comments. Just be honest with me. I won't get my feelings hurt. I just thought, you know, I would try it out for a video just to see how it went. I also got this new beauty blender from e.l.f. Yes, e.l.f. I think it's like the cookies and cream collection that they just came out with. And this feels just like a real like name brand, like the brand beauty blender. Well, I started my dog grooming journey about, um, about two years ago. I started it in uh, 2020 and we are in the beginning of 2022. So I am still fresh in the industry, but I remember enough to talk about my journey with it and the beginnings of it. A lot of you guys were like, oh my gosh, like I think dog grooming looks so fun and I wanna get into it. Can you talk about like your experience in school and you know, stuff like that. Little background. Growing up, like ever since I was a wee little tot, I have always wanted to do stuff with animals like either be a vet or work with animals in some capacity of my life. Um, that has always been a thing. But what's weird is dog grooming never once like crossed my mind. Like I obviously knew it was a thing, but it was never like one of those things where I was like, oh my God, I wanna do that. It's really weird, but that was never like a thing of mine. I just, it honestly kind of just fell into my lap. And it was actually because of my best friend why I got into dog grooming. So before I was a dog groomer, um, I was a barista for five and a half years at Big B Coffee. I was on and off shift manager or shift lead. I was on and off um, assistant store lead. You know, I was doing all those positions and I was there five and a half years. So I was there for, you know, a really long time. And that's actually where I met my best friend. That's where I met my boyfriend. So I have a lot of good memories and a really good history with Big B. Uh, they will always be like really important to me. But while I was working there, I started to get, I was just starting to get really sad there. Like, you know, I had certain people leave and I feel like, you know, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't the same place that I had originally started out with, you know, like people 
change roles and management and sometimes it can either really make or break a job so I was just feeling kind of kind of sad working there and I wasn't really enjoying it as much as I once did because when I worked at Big B you guys I fucking loved that job like I <laughs> I used to wake up like fucking jazz to go to work like I loved working there it was always so much fun and I don't know I just kind of felt really kind of down in the dumps about it didn't really want to work there anymore got really depressed because I didn't really know what to do and I was hanging out with my best friend and we do this thing called car rides and coffee so we will literally go and get coffee and then we'll go on like an hour-long car ride and just talk it's what we've always done so and we still do that to this day um so yeah we were having one of our little like coffee dates and I was talking to her about how I was feeling and she brought up, she was like, you know, you've always wanted to do something with animals. Why don't you get into dog grooming? And I was like, what? Because, you know, she obviously knows that I love animals. And another thing about me is I really like doing hair. Now, like color, I like coloring people's hair. That's always been a thing. And she's like, well, you like to color people's hair and you like animals. So why not put the two together and become a dog groomer? And that's when it literally like clicked. She was like, like, let's find a school, let's schedule a tour, I'll go with you, like, let's get this started. So that's literally how the thought of becoming a dog groomer came into my mind. And I obviously knew that there was a dog grooming school in my area. Yeah, it was actually because of my best friend why I ended up in dog grooming. She's not a dog groomer herself or anything. It was her that came up with the idea, which I thought was super cool and that's literally how it came to be. So the dog grooming school that I went to was called Paragon School of Pet Grooming. Uh, it used to be located in, I say used to because we'll get into that. Uh, it used to be located in like the Jenison Granville area in Michigan and I believe it was the only one, the only dog grooming school like in that area if that makes sense. There we go, I had to fix the lighting a little bit. That is the school that I did attend and I believe it was the end of March or April, I called the school and I told them that I was interested in their program and they had three different ones. They had a 200 hour program, a 400 hour program and a 600 hour program. So it was like the 200 hour program was the groom tech program which is like bathing nail trimming things like that then they have the pet groomer program which is the 400 hours and that's like you know haircuts and stuff and then the 600 hour program which is what i was originally enrolled for that was the pet stylist program that's where you learn like show cuts and you know breed standards and all of that stuff so you know i called the school i scheduled a tour i got some information on the program and i was like cool like i really want to do the 600 hour program that sounds like if i'm going to do this i'm going to go all in and do it so i went to the school and i met with my mentor and we toured the school and I was just like, I was, I was, I literally felt like I walked into like Willy Wonka because I was just looking around at just like amazement. Like there were students, you know, practicing blow drying dogs and there were students with dogs on the table and they were like watching their instructor and stuff and there was people doing book work and I was like, wow, like this is freaking awesome. Like you are getting total undivided attention you are getting hands-on experience like I was just this is awesome so I was really excited and I was scheduled to start my dog grooming school I was scheduled to start April 24th of 2020 that was supposed to be my first day and it was going to be Monday through Friday 8 to 4 so it was literally going to be like a full-time schooling so I was going to be very very busy and my life was going to be very much revolving around that I did pay for schooling all by myself I didn't need like financial help or anything I mean if you do it's fine they did have that option but I decided to just pay for all uh, in full right there while I was there and I want to say it was around I think in total for school I think I paid around like twenty five to four thousand twenty five hundred dollars to four thousand somewhere in there 
Um, it could have been in the middle. I'm not exactly sure. So, I mean, it was a pretty decent chunk of money, but I did have some money set aside, you know, for emergencies and, you know, things like school, I guess, because that's what I ended up using it on. So I did pay for school by myself, and I was, you know, it was official. I had my start date. I already paid for school. I ordered my books and my toolkit and all that stuff. That's another thing is at that school, they give you, they gave you, like, books to learn from. Like, they have a dog terminology book, notes from the grooming table, theory of five, the full big AKC book, and you also get a full toolkit with some, like, beginner tools. So you get, like, some curves, some straights, some thinners. You also get a pair of clippers. So, I mean, this school was, like, freaking awesome. They provided you with everything, especially to get you started. It was really cool. That was also included in me paying for school as I also paid for my toolkit. I had everything ordered, everything was paid for, and I had my start date. Okay, I was really excited. I was telling everybody. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to school to be a dog groomer. I'm so excited, da da da. And then it was about a week away from my start date at Paragon, like the in-person start date. And I get an email from my mentor who was going to be, you know, there with me in school. And I get an email from her and you know this was this was 2020 okay this was around the time where the entire world shut down due to covid i get an email from my mentor saying hey like the governor has issued a stay at home order so we are not going to be able to start your schooling until may so i was like Ugh, what the fuck okay fine whatever totally understood you know there was nothing we could really do at that time we didn't really know a whole lot about you know covid and what what was going on so i was like okay that's fine so you know my start date for school was going to be in april and then it was going to be in may and then i don't fucking know and then i get another email in may of 2020 telling me that hey brie unfortunately our school is shutting down permanently shutting down permanently like not temporarily permanently and this is all because of covid literally all because of covid because they it was i mean even though they did have like a decent sized building they it wasn't like massive and according to the governor's orders they could not have in-person learning because there was not enough room to space everybody apart you know they called me and i was like freaking out i was like like what the fuck am i gonna do like i paid for school i paid for everything and now you're telling me that i can't you know go to school and get that hands-on you know education that's the other thing about paragon is they had the in-person schooling which is what i originally was going to do i was going to go there monday through friday and learn and get that hands-on they also had what's called an online distance learning program so while i was talking to them you know i said is there any way like that the building is going to open back up like is there any hope at all that i will be able to do in-person schooling and she said no she said we're actually clearing out the building right now like we are officially shutting down for good like we are never opening up again and i was devastated devastated because if there's one thing that is crucial about dog grooming is hands-on experience you cannot read a book and then all of a sudden know how to do a paw pad trim or uh, fucking cl clip a nail like <laughs> so I was so devastated because I was really looking forward to that in-person experience like I can't even stress that enough I was so sad and she said so here's what we'll do she's like if you're still interested you know we can get you started in the online program or we can just refund you everything completely give you all your money back and you you know you just get a refund and move on I guess and again that made me really sad because I was not ready I was not ready to give up on this dream of mine I was not ready to give up on this goal so I was like okay let me call you back and I thought about it I talked it over with people and they were like you know what can it hurt do the online program, see how it goes, 
and go from there. So that is exactly what I did. So everything that I was supposed to be doing hands-on in person with an instructor and a teacher went to just me online doing my book work from home on a computer, watching lessons, taking notes, taking tests, watching videos. Uh, it was, <laughs> it was challenging. It was also very hard because I am, I have a hard time holding myself accountable for things like that. Like if I know I have to do school from home, I'm kind of like, no. So I had to really, you know, self-discipline myself and I had to set time away to like, okay, like I'm gonna dedicate these hours to school and these hours, you know, not, not doing school. With the online program, you have to do, and I, I believe it was the same thing with the in-person school as well, but you have to do these things called tracker journals. And what a tracker journal is, is you have to document, because even though you're doing the online schooling, you still have to do uh, real dogs. Like you have to get experience with real dogs. So the first portion of my schooling was I had to do 10 nail trims. I had to... Uh, do 10 ear cleanings and ear pluckings. I had to do uh, 10 paw pad shaves and I had to record all the dogs like the name, the breed and what I did on this tracker journal. I'm sure you can understand what my problem was. I do not have 10 different dogs. Okay, I have two dogs and uh, I was not going to a school therefore I did not have access to all of these dogs to practice on and that's when I immediately started to freak out because in order to pass you know level one and then move on to level two level one is like the groom tech program and level two is the uh, pet groomer program but in order to move on from level one to level two you have to have a full and checked off tracker journal I was like fuck like, what am I gonna do? Like, I don't, what am I gonna do? Like, I don't have 10 dogs and I don't know where I'm supposed to get access to all these different dogs because I'm not going to school because it shut down and like, what am I gonna do? So I called my mentor and I was like, hey, uh, I don't know how I am supposed to pass this program if I'm supposed to practice on all these different dogs. I mean, it makes sense that I had to do that, but I was, confused because I was like, well, how do you expect people to just have access to all these dogs? You know what I'm saying? I told her, I was like, like, what am I supposed to do here? Because this doesn't seem like a realistic thing for me because I was still working at Big B while doing all of this. So on my days off, I was doing YouTube and schooling. And then when I wasn't, I was at work because I have bills to pay, right? So <laughs> I was just kind of freaking out and I was starting to get really discouraged. I was like, do I give up? Do I continue? What do I do? And my mentor is basically like, well, you, you know, you have a couple options. You can go on the Nextdoor app and you can ask people, you know, hey, like bring your dogs to me for nail trimmings, blah, 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 which I don't know, that seems kind of sketch to me. I wouldn't want random people showing up to my house with their dogs so I could clip their nails for school. I don't know, that just seems really sketch. And she was like, or you can look around in salons in your area and see if they will accept a student so you can get your tracker journal hours in. And I was like, okay. And I remember just feeling so sad about this whole situation because I was like, you know, if COVID never would have happened, the school would have never shut down and I wouldn't have to worry about this. I wouldn't be having the stress that I'm having right now. Like I wouldn't be feeling so defeated because I really was, I was feeling really, really defeated here. By this time, it was around the end of May, uh, May or June of 2020 and that's when things slowly started opening back up like when the world shut down I'm talking everything shut down like salons grooming salons shut down um, people weren't even able to get their dogs groomed so it was like it was a really stressful time and once things started opening back up I was like okay this is my sh this is my chance now to get in somewhere and see if I can get some you know, hands-on learning. And my mentor told me about one salon that was actually owned by someone who was a Paragon graduate. 
And I was like, oh, that would be really nice. Like they would understand the program and they would be able to help me, blah, blah, blah. So I called that salon and uh, my first impression was they were, they were kind of rude and I mean, they were also kind of stressed because everything was opening back up and they were just getting swarmed with dogs. Because, you know, people went like two months without getting their dogs groomed. So once grooming salons started opening back up, people went crazy. So I told her, you know, my situation. I told her my mentor's name and she was like, oh yeah, like I'm, I'm a graduate, blah, 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 blah. And I told her, I said, yeah, well, unfortunately, like their school shut down. And I was wondering if you were accepting you know, some help. I could help like with nail trims and getting dogs prepped and whatnot. And she was basically like, um, no, I'm not really interested in taking on someone new, uh, but you can call me back like in a few weeks and see if I change my mind. And I was just kind of like, okay, I'm just going to take that as a no and move on. So I quit. I didn't even call back and they never called me back. So I quickly gave up on that salon. I was like, you know what? Like these people all just seem kind of rude. So I'm gonna just go at this on my own. And that is exactly what I did. So I started Googling dog, dog salons in my area. And that is exactly what I did. So I started looking up uh, dog grooming salons in my area. I started looking at, you know, pictures and, you know, what they, what they offer there, what they do there. And then it hit me. The vet clinic that I take my dogs to also has a grooming salon that I used to take Avril to, to get groomed. And I was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of that first? Like, what the heck? So, you know, I was like, okay, I've been a client there for like six years. I've been taking Avril to get groomed there for a couple of years. I was like, let me, let me try. I know the groomer there. Well, I didn't like know her, know her, but I knew her because she literally, she grew my dog. So I decided, I was like, okay, what have I got to lose? This is going to be like my last shot. If this doesn't work, then I'm just going to get my money back from school and I'm just going to give up and just say, you know, I did the best I could, whatever. So I messaged them and I said, hey, like, I explained my situation that I was a grooming student and my school shut down and I was just looking for a place so I could get my hours. Uh, they wouldn't have to, I didn't, I was like, you don't have to pay me, you don't have to hire me, I just want to come and like, you know, apprentice and learn and watch and, you know, get my tracker journal. And I, you know, I honestly wasn't expecting a response, to be perfectly honest with you, because this was around a time where things were crazy with like opening back up. And they replied and said, we would love to have you like come in on this day uh, and meet with our groomer, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was over the moon, you guys. I was so excited because school for me was literally at a standstill because I couldn't move on in the program because I didn't have dogs to submit, you know what I mean? So I literally had to like stop school for a minute and figure out where I was gonna get my hands on all these dogs. So when they said that they would have me, I was over the moon excited. And the whole thing with school is when you do the Paragon online program, you are given a mentor, which is someone to help coach you and talk to you and help you with assignments and stuff like that. The mentor that I had was helpful in the beginning, but once I started at the vet clinic grooming salon that I found myself because no one else would help me, um, my mentor kind of took a back seat. Uh, she really wasn't very helpful and I was learning a great majority of grooming from the groomer at that at the vet clinic. She was teaching me things, she was showing me things not to do, important things to watch out for. So I actually, even though I was paying for school, I learned more from the, the groomer than I did from my mentor. So I thought that was kind of shitty. I know some people have good experiences and bad experience with their mentors. Uh, I don't really think I had that great of an experience with mine personally. So ever since, you know, I, I was apprenticing or I was learning at that grooming salon in the vet clinic, I was like, you know what? Like, I wonder if after I finish school and, you know, I, I'm able to like open my wings and be able to groom dogs by myself, I was like, I wonder if I would be able to like get a job here. 
Like, how cool would that be? You know, I've been taking my dogs there for vet care and grooming for years, so, you know, I knew everybody there. I knew the location. It was relatively close to where I live. So I was like, this just makes, this just makes a lot of sense. So I apprenticed from June through most of September uh, where I was just learning. I was not getting paid. I was not an employee. I was going there on my off time from work to learn grooming, uh, bathing, nail clipping, uh, behavior, everything like that. I was just soaking up as much information as I could. And I kid you not, I will, I literally feel like I owe my life to the groomer. I'm not going to say her name or anything for privacy reasons because I don't know if she wants to be um, talked about on the internet. So, but seriously, I feel like I owe everything to this girl who helped me and taught me. And even still to this day, when I groom, I hear her voice in my head. So if I'm doing something, I'm like, wait, that's not how you do that. So-and-so would tell me to do it this way. So I have learned, I've literally learned so much from her. And I think because of her, I've come such a long way. And I just feel indebted to her. You know what I mean? Like she, she helped me like stay on track and she helped me. She just, she was great. Uh, more, she was more helpful than school was to be perfectly honest with you. I was still working at Bigby at this time. And once I finally finished schooling, you know, with the in-person school, I was originally going to do the 600 hour program, which was the pet stylist. Now I was gonna do that because I knew that they would have sporting breeds, terriers, poodles for the pet styling, but I knew doing this on my own outside of an in-person schooling, I was never in my life gonna be able to find a purebred Bichon or a sporting group or just all of the dogs needed for the pet styling program. Uh, I was never, that was never gonna happen. So when I did the online program, I switched from the 600 hour program down to the 400. So I was just gonna do the pet groomer program and not the pet stylist program, if that makes sense. So once I officially finished level two, which is the pet groomer program, which I completed and graduated on September 3rd of 2020, I was really excited, really, really excited. I felt like I, for the first time in a very long time, I felt like I accomplished something and I felt like I I could actually do something with my life and not just work a minimum wage job until I'm on my deathbed, you know what I mean? Because I was not making shit for money at Big B. Um, fun fact, if you want to work at Big B, the only reason you will stay at Big B is because of the family atmosphere. It's not going to be because of the money because Big B franchises, I tell you what, they don't pay their employees dick shit because the owners of those franchises, I, in my opinion, are very greedy and they don't really give a shit about their employees. So you don't, you don't make shit at Big B. So I knew I did not want to stay there forever. You know what I mean? So I was very excited once I graduated from school and I was like, okay, the next step is to make this an actual job. And that's when I decided to apply to be a dog groomer at the same vet clinic slash grooming salon that I apprenticed in and that I have been a client of for many, many years. And I talked to, you know, the main groomer about it. I was like, well, yeah, I'm kind of interested in this one just because it's, you know, my dogs are already clients here and it's so close to where I live and it's, I'm, I'm comfortable here. And, you know, she was like, yeah, like, I get that, totally understand. So I went through the whole, like, application process where the groomer would give me a certain dog, tell me what, tell me the haircut, and I would have to do it alone completely without asking questions. And then I would have to show my manager, the groom, and see if she was happy with it. Uh, that way she could approve it, and that way, you know, it would determine if I was worth keeping in the in the salon, you know what I mean? And on September 27th of 2020? Yes, 
September 27th of 2020, I was officially hired as a dog groomer there, and I was only working a couple days a week because, you know, we still had another, the other groomer there, and I was not about to take her gig. I was like, yep, a couple days is fine. I was still working at Big B. I was like, yeah, you know, a couple days is totally fine with me. Like, you know, I don't mind. I don't want to I don't want to take any of her hours or take any of her dogs. So, you know, I was there a couple days a week and then eventually that groomer left and then I moved up to be the main groomer, which is when I jumped into six days a week, which I think, to be perfectly honest with you, I think that was the biggest mistake I could have ever made with this because ever since then, you know, working six days a week, I have been feeling very burned out with dog grooming. I have not been feeling as passionate about dog grooming ever since then. That was a lot uh, on the body, the mind, and the soul. And then in August, July or August, I went back down to like three to four days a week, which was which has been a lot better. But working those six days a week uh, really, really fucked with my head. And I was like, I don't like, I don't want to do this anymore. I was not feeling I didn't want to groom. I stopped grooming people's dogs out of my house as extra like side practice. Stopped grooming my own dogs because I was like, I can't, like I don't want to groom anymore. I'm so fucking tired, I can't do this. And that's one thing I'm gonna say is if you are gonna get into dog grooming and you are going to jump into this field, the one thing I will say is burnout is real. It is definitely a real thing and I want you guys to avoid that as much as possible. One thing that I want to stress to people getting into this industry is do not do more than what you are capable of because burnout is a very real thing. Every groomer right now is suffering from burnout. I am definitely suffering from it. Like if someone came to me and said, you can't groom for the next two months, I would honestly be okay with that because I'm so tired. It is... Dog grooming is not what you think it is, okay? And I was the same naive person. Uh, I thought it was going to be a fun job. While it is cute and fun, um, it is also the world's hardest job um, I think any human can do, perfectly honest. In anything regarding animals, and this goes for vet medicine, veterinarians, vet techs, vet assistants, dog groomers, uh, this job is extremely challenging on your mental health, on your physical health, and on your spiritual health. You see things that you never thought you would see in your life. Put your body, especially dog grooming, you put your body through such a ringer that you don't know if you will ever be able to recover from it. Some people have to retire early because their body is so badly beat up from dog grooming for so long. So I do not want people to get into dog grooming just because you think it's fun and just because you think you're going to be playing with puppies all day because I'm here to tell you right now that is not the case, okay? You do not sit around on the floor and brush puppies and give kisses all day, no. The job is very difficult. The job is very challenging. This job, like most jobs, uh, has the ability to completely put you in the hospital. It has, it can kill you. It can destroy your body past the point of repairs. There are many groomers who are in the industry that have had to have carpal tunnel surgery. They've had to have back surgery, neck, neck surgery, shoulder surgery. It's a very, very difficult job. And I just don't want people to be naive about it. I want people to understand what they're getting into. I want people to understand how difficult it is. And I want people to understand that practice is very important. That's another thing is I do struggle with criticism a lot. I had a very hard time when someone would tell me like, oh, that looks like shit or oh, like don't do it that way. But at the same time, that's what you also need to be prepared for is you need to be prepared to have unhappy clients. You need to be prepared to have an unhappy coworker or manager, especially if you are being mentored by somebody. You need to have tough skin. You can't take things personally. There are, see in dog grooming, there are things that that you sh definitely should never do, but there is also 
people have different styles okay some everyone has a different way of grooming what i find cute someone else may not find cute and vice versa so you have to just be you have to just be willing to accept um, criticism. You have to be open to accepting critiques and learning a different way of doing something. That is something that in the beginning I really struggled with. Like I wanted to cry almost every single time someone criticized something, but you can't do that because at the end of the day, all they're trying to do is help you better your work. And I can tell you right now that as blunt as my coworker was with me telling me like don't ever do that again that is awful do not do it this way like do it this way as blunt as she was i feel like that honestly is what helped me the most because i still remember those things to this day so if i'm doing something i hear her voice and she's like no don't do that like you know what i mean so it it is tough but it is also very very helpful i fucked up my winged liner so bad I very rarely, I wear makeup maybe like a couple times a month now, so I do not do makeup as regularly as I used to, so now I just don't know how to do it at all. <laughs> okay, like a majority of it's going to be covered with my bangs anyway, so let's just move on. Oh my god, I cannot believe how bad I fucked that up. I thought about just like completely taking my makeup off and starting from scratch, but I do not have time for that fucking bullshit. Like, I have way too much to do today. I don't have time to sit here and perfect my makeup. So yeah, that was basically, like, my dog grooming school experience. Now, when it comes to dog grooming school now, I honestly don't know what where people are going or what they're doing. Uh, I do know that there is not at least not where close to where I am. There is not another dog grooming school to go to. A lot of it is people are traveling to go to school or people are doing online programs. And uh, I also know that PetSmart and Petco, I believe they have their own like grooming academy thing. Overall, pretty happy with Paragon. And Paragon is not just a Michigan thing. Anybody can do the Paragon program. If you go to their website, they have like information and stuff. So, you know, you can do it that way. Um, if you already work in a grooming salon as a bather, sometimes your workplace will pay for the Paragon program for you. Uh, there's just a lot of different things. And basically what to expect when you go to school, at least at Paragon, you're going to learn about blade care. You're going to learn about different sizes of blades and where to use them and guard combs. You're also going to learn about coat types, curly, straight, smooth, um, double coat, all that stuff, uh, drop coats. Uh, you're going to learn how to properly bathe. You're going to learn how to properly dry, uh, nail clipping, ear cleaning, and plucking. You're also going to learn how to do a bladed all trim, which is a full haircut with a blade. And you're also going to learn guarded trims, which is doing a full haircut with a clip-on guard comb. Uh, you're going, you, you do learn a lot. You do get a lot of information. I just think the most difficult part about going to Paragon is the lack of help from my mentor and trying to find certain breeds for certain assignments. Now the assignments, you basically submit them by detailed pictures. Like you have to take pictures at all these different angles and you have to submit them on the, uh, on the Paragon website and your mentor looks them over and will either pass or fail you. So, I mean, it is definitely, and there's also book work. There's Oh my god, I'm for freaking the fuck out. Uh, there is also book work, there is test, there is studying. So at least that's what I experienced personally with Paragon. That's just kind of what you, what to expect basically. And would I do anything different? No. I am happy with where I ended up. I'm happy with how everything went, even though it was very challenging and it was kind of a little bit of a scare there for a minute like I didn't know if I was going to be able to get in anywhere able to complete school but thankfully I did and now I uh, what is it like a year and a half later I'm still employed at that salon and I am the main groomer at that salon now and things are going really well clients are happy my boss is happy and that's that's really all that matters to me 
but it's not it's not an easy job guys it's really not uh, I know a lot of people when they hear like oh you're a dog groomer like that's a cool hobby but like you should get a real job dog grooming is a real job and I'm also here to tell you that if you do it right you can actually make six figures being a dog groomer uh, that's not the case for everybody and it definitely doesn't start out that way but there are actually quite a few groomers that make six figures doing dog grooming dog grooming is a very lucrative business it is something that always needs to be done people always need their dogs groomed especially with this absolutely horrendous doodle Thing going on right now where everyone and their mother brother uncle is getting a goddamn doodle uh, our business is very much needed and is not going away anytime soon so dog grooming is a very lucrative business and if you are interested in learning a skill if you are interested in learning about animals and haircuts then I would definitely look into dog grooming. I just I just want to stress that while it is a really great job it is a very rewarding job it can also be very sad it can also be very scary and it is incredibly challenging. Uh, I just want people to be prepared because even though I was told that this is a very hard job, I think once I experienced certain things for myself, I think that's when I really had to do some soul searching and that's when I really had to be like, wow, like I need to make sure that this is something I want to do because dog grooming is not for the weak. It is not for the weak. A lot of people try it and a lot of people say I can't do this and they walk out. I've had a few instances where I didn't think I could do it anymore, but I stuck it through because I do enjoy it. You know, even on the bad days, I come home, I unwind, I, you know, and then I go back and I do it the next day and I try to be even better than I was the day before. So it's, you have to be a very disciplined person. I have definitely grown as a person since I've become a dog groomer. I do not take a lot of bullshit. Um, <laughs> I have learned a lot. I have definitely grow. I've definitely grew a tougher skin. But you know, it's it's difficult. You are going to get bit. You are going to get pissed on. You are going to get shit on. You're gonna do anal glands. You're going to see dogs in such deplorable conditions that you can't even believe that the dog is even still alive. Um, I've seen some shit and I'm sure I will see many more shits in many different forms throughout the night throughout the years I do plan on continuing dog grooming for the long term I don't plan on quitting or leaving this profession anytime soon What I want to know is so I've been doing this just under two years I want to know when am I not considered a baby groomer anymore? Like is it after the two-year mark where you become like you're a groomer? Because some people say like if you've been grooming under two years, you're still considered a baby groomer. I don't really know how that works. So I mean, if you're a groomer, let me know. Am I still considered a baby groomer? I'm not really sure. And that's another thing is I do groom in a vet clinic and grooming in a vet clinic compared to grooming in a regular grooming shop, it does have its differences. For example, vet clinics, we get some of the worst behaved dogs that have been kicked out of grooming salons because they cannot do them. Usually they will get sent to a vet clinic where we will groom them under either sedation or medication under the supervision of a licensed veterinarian or vet tech. Um, so, I mean, I do get some of the really bad aggressive dogs, which is kind of a downside, but it also, I feel like, is very helpful. Um, I feel like I kind of jumped into the deep end first, you know, dealing with the aggressive dogs as opposed to working in a mom and pop shop where, you know, I get all the sweet, cute little ones that are always nice. Uh, but I went right to vet clinic, which we do, we do see some pretty scary dogs. So you really, you really also, if you do want to get into this, you do kind of want to decide what you want to do with it. Do you want to work in a local grooming shop? Do you want to work in a vet clinic? Do you want to open your own shop? Do you want to groom out of your house? Um, you really want to decide what you want to do and you also want to make sure that you're doing it ethically and legally. Um, dog grooming is not a regulated business here in the state of Michigan. Uh, anyone who is not a dog groomer, like the person down the street could open up a dog grooming salon tomorrow and start grooming. Uh, that's another very scary thing about the industry is you want to make sure you are working for somebody that has adequate experience and knowledge and not just someone who wants money. Okay? So that is also something very important that you want to look into is make sure that, you know, whoever you're working for or wherever you're going to go work, uh, knows what the fuck they're doing because if you don't know what you're doing and you decide to just start grooming willy-nilly uh you could seriously injure yourself 
or injure slash kill an animal, okay? So just make sure you're being smart about it. Okay, so, oh my God, I almost forgot highlighter. Am I on crack? All right, so the look is all finished up. It is a hot mess, okay? Like, there is nothing cute about this look. <laughs> my eyeliner is so fucked up. Like, it is so fucked up. Like, what the hell? Like, I wish... Oh my god, what the hell. Okay, anyway, so that was my full dog grooming school and journey experience. Hopefully, hopefully I answered everything in depth enough. Some tips that I have for any of you who are going to get started into dog grooming is one, never ever stop your education. Always continue to learn more. The industry is always changing. There is always new and different things to try. So never stop your education. Always look for constructive criticism or help if you need it. Number three is don't get discouraged. Even if you do a really bad groom and it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, I promise the next two grooms that you do, you're gonna be so happy with. So you're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad days. Don't take things super personally. Uh, you are going to have, like I said, bad days and good days, but the only thing you can do is keep going, don't give up, keep practicing. Even if you have an accident where you accidentally cut a dog, which is going to happen, if you are a new groomer or even an experienced groomer, uh, accidents do happen. You know, you zig, the dog zags, and you have a really sharp tool in your hand. Sometimes accidents happen. That is okay. Just remember to be transparent, be honest with the owner, even if you have to pay the vet bill, do that as well, okay? It just be smart, be careful, make sure that you are doing this for the welfare and the health of the animal and you're not doing it for greed or money purposes. Doing quantity over quality, in my opinion, is not the best thing. I think you should be putting out your best work. I think you should be taking your time and learning. Uh, I think it should be quality over quantity. So just take your time, go slow, have fun. It can be a really fun job. It's a very rewarding job. You see a lot of really cool dogs, really unique dogs. Uh, it's, it's, it is a really fun job, but those are just some of the tips that I have for you. Again, hopefully this video was in depth enough so you guys could easily follow along with it. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I do think I have a few dog groomers as well that also watch my channel. So if any of you guys want to share your journey or a tip that you have down in the comments, uh, please feel free to do so. Let's not... because. And that's another thing, in the grooming industry, there can be a lot of really mean-hearted groomers out there. So let's not have any of that negativity here. Let's try to uplift each other and let's try to be helpful and just try to help new groomers and maybe even old groomers as well. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I have had this video on my list for a very long time uh, to film, but I wanted to make sure that I had my full beginning journey mapped out so I could easily explain it to you guys before I filmed it. But I think I'm pretty happy with it, so hopefully it is helpful to some of you. If this video, after watching it, if it made you want to groom, if it made you want to continue down your journey, let me know. And if you thought you wanted to groom and now you're like, whoa, I don't think I want to, also let me know. I am very curious. But if any of you guys are watching this and you enjoyed this video, please go down and give it a huge thumbs up. I would really greatly appreciate it. Also, if you are new to my channel and this is the first video of mine that you are seeing, make sure you go down and hit that red subscribe button. I do upload every three to four days here. Also, if you would like to follow my Instagram where I upload all of my grooms. I will have it right here and down in the description box as well if you guys want to follow me and check out my grooming and my journey and all that. But that is all that I have. I am going to go clean up and start editing this video and get it up for you guys. So again, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye and happy grooming! Mwah.